This is very high inflation, and it's hurting everybody. And and we need to do our job, and and get inflation back on on a path down to two percent. And the way we're going to do that, we think, is is raise rates. Inflation is transitory," said the U.S. Fed's Chairman Jerome Powell back in 2021, almost exactly one year after the U.S. government started giving out stimulus checks, reduced interest rates to almost zero percent, and started buying back bonds, basically injecting a lot of money into the economy. At that time, the term "transitory" means that inflation caused by the increased amount of money. In the system, will not leave a permanent mark in the economy, and that、uh, will be back to the normal blooming bull run after the pandemic is over. Silly, isn't it? So I think the word transitory has different meanings to different people. To, to many, it carries a time, a sense of、uh, of short lived. We we tend to to to, to ha- use it to mean that it, that it won't leave a permanent mark、uh, in the in the form of higher inflation. I think it's. It's probably a good time to retire that that、uh, word and try to explain more clearly what we mean. Well, there you go. The Fed was almost entirely wrong because today in 2022 we are seeing record levels of inflation, the highest since 1981. And what did the Fed do about this? They started panicking and announced the raising of interest rates early this year. And as of the recording of this video in June, the Fed just raised another 75 basis point, and they scheduled for another 50 to 75 bips in July. Oh my God! So when all things fail, inflation is out of control. Should the Fed pull out their ultimate weapon? And implement the Paul Walker strategy to end all of this once and for all. Well, before I even talk about the strategy, let me start by introducing you to Paul Walker himself, the then U.S. Fed Chairman from 1979 to 1987, which is within a period known as the Great Inflation that lasted from 1965 to 1982. When he was appointed in late 1979, the U.S. inflation was at a staggering 11 percent, and it peaked at over 14 percent in 1980, almost double to what we have now. Hopefully, we are not heading towards that direction. Fingers crossed. Anyways, I digress. To understand Volcker, we'll have to learn more about Arthur Burns, Volcker's predecessor, who ran an expansionary monetary policy, which essentially means a policy that allows the money supply to expand faster and short-term interest rates will be lowered. That's because during this time period, the Vietnam War was still ongoing, and because of this, the then President Richard Nixon also severed the ties between the U.S. dollar and gold, which ended the Bretton Woods Agreement. I've talked about this before, so feel free to check out this video. More money for businesses and the people and the economy will then flourish, right? For a while, yes, but they did not predict the horror that was to come. For Nixon, this was a big win for him, as in 1972, he got re-elected with a landslide victory of having a majority vote of over 60%, which at that time, the largest margin in the electoral college in any presidential election. Anything for the votes, huh? Sounds familiar. Hmm. So long story short, all of that shenanigans resulted in hyperinflation, and Paul Volcker, being the then Fed chairman, was faced with a hard choice. Just like the situation Jerome Powell is facing today, risk recession and have a chance at combating inflation, or let inflation run rampant and risk the collapse of the U.S. economy and the dollar. The way you're going to get those interest rates down is by persisting in policies that will indeed continue to bring the inflation rate down. And、at some point, this dam is going to break, and the psychology is going to change. What did he choose? Well, let's just say he chose to target the money supply in order to curb inflation. He does that by raising the interest rates, and with that, the Fed makes it less appealing to borrow money from banks. For businesses, mortgages, and even car loans, deja vu, right? That is essentially the same situation we are in right now, where we have 40 years high inflation, and the Fed is trying to combat it by hiking interest rates by 75 basis points, potentially twice in a row in the span of two months. And if you think 150 bits is a lot, this is only a fraction of what Paul Volcker. Did back then in March 1980, Volcker decided enough is enough, and he raised the Fed fund rates to around 20% for a few months, then dropped back to 16%, then raised it back up again to 20% again when inflation returned, and all of that lasted until May of 1981, to a point where Americans back then felt that they will never be able to buy a home again due to the super high interest rates. Did it work? 
yes, it did end inflation, but it also caused the 1981 recession, where unemployment was off the roof to almost 11% in 1982. And at the same time, the high interest rates also put immense pressure on industries that rely a lot on borrowing, such as the manufacturing and construction industry. The jobs are taken and this, this is a new opening. Everybody needs a job. Just no jobs. Not here in Chattanooga, I guess. You know, no jobs here. It got so bad up to the point that the Congress had to intervene and call for interest rates to be lowered and for monetary policy to be loosened. What did the man do? Volcker ignored them and insisted that failure to bring down long-run inflation expectations would result in more serious economic circumstances over a much longer period of time. And by being ever so persistent and stubborn, Volcker was seen as a villain and hated by the public where he was accused of single-handedly murdering millions of American businesses. So long story short, did ignoring Congress pay off for Volcker and the American people? I definitely say yes because by October 1982, inflation dropped to 5% per year and the Fed dropped interest rates to back down to 9%. Unemployment ultimately dropped from 11% in 1982 to 8% in 1983 and lower in the years to come. There were a couple of inflation scares throughout the 80s but Volcker and his successors made sure that the inflation levels of the 70s did not return again. So in terms of record inflation like now, what are the chances for the Feds to vulgar the US economy with 10 or 20% interest rates and end inflation once and for all? You can't deal with that problem by simply saying we're going to let inflation go ahead. Well, so far Jerome Powell has gone from saying inflation is transitory to inflation is not transitory to not guaranteeing a soft landing to going full on hawkish with interest rates which may just topple the economy into a recession. Effective that if interest rates go too high too fast that it could drive us into a recession? It's certainly a possibility. It's not our intended uh, outcome at all, but it's certainly a possibility. And, and frankly, the events of the last few months you know, around the world have, have, uh, have made it more difficult for us to achieve what we want, which is 2% inflation gotcha. and still a strong labor market. And then of course you have Janet Yellen, the US Treasury Secretary, saying worst case scenario, it's gonna be a sharp slowdown only. I don't know about you, but that smells like BS to me. Honestly, it's really up in the air right now. But if inflation remains elevated, then the Fed might just consider volkering the US economy since they would have probably decided recession is the lesser of two evils. Maybe for a short period of say 6 to 12 months, it's definitely gut-wrenching. But sometimes you just got to choose your poison, I guess. In the meantime, investors like us can only pay close attention to the macroeconomics such as commodity prices, especially the food and oil prices. In my opinion, I would say the recession should theoretically start in the Europe first since they are the most impacted by the Ukraine-Russia conflict and when the oil shortage prolongs and supply remain low, then the only way to control inflation is unfortunately by destroying demands aka make everyone poorer so that they wouldn't need as much oil. Anyways, let me know in the comments section down below what do you think about it. Should Jerome Powell just vocal the hell out of inflation and rug pull all of us? Or should they just monitor and react according to the situation which honestly hasn't been really working out? I don't know, why don't you tell me? Alright, that's all from me. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay invested and as usual, I will see you in the next one.